Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the PAO event? I am ready for the PAO event. CBS is Face the Nation. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Face the Nation. How do you hear me? I have you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the space station. We're back with a very long distance remote. Astronaut Scott Kelly joins us from the International Space Station. Commander Kelly, you first went into space in 1999. What's different now? Well, my first flight was on uh, just on the space shuttle. It was to the Hubble Space Telescope, and that was before we had the uh, the International Space Station. It wasn't uh, a few years later uh, before we launched the the uh, the first uh, people uh, to the space station, the first uh, human presence in space, which we've had for the last 15 years. So, uh, you know, it's a much different experience now with uh, this International Space Station and the international cooperation and all the research we have uh, that go with it than, than what we were doing uh, back in the 1990s and previously. How about for you personally, though, being in space now relative to that very first time you went? Well, you know, flying in space is a, a privilege, whether it's the first time or the or the fourth time. But you know, obviously back then it was my first flight. It was uh, seven days long, and uh, you know, since then I've flown three times previous uh, or, or subsequently durations of you know 13 days, 159 days, and now uh, you know this next this flight will be close to a year. So they've been getting uh, larger and larger each time, and I think. If I fly a fifth time, it'll have to be to Mars to get that kind of uh, duration that'll be required to keep up the trend. Before we go any further, what, what room are you in there? So I am in the, the U.S. Destiny Laboratory module, which is like the main uh, module for the U.S. side of the space station. It's... Uh, a combination of uh, laboratory and sort of like the bridge of a ship. Um, I guess you could describe it with a lot of uh, of the systems that are required to operate the space station are in here, as well as experiments. And in case there are any conspiracy theorists out there, how would you prove to us that you're in zero gravity? I, c I would just do this for, for a while and... Uh, Unless I was falling, that would be kind of hard to do. <laughs> That's convinced me. When, uh, when George Mallory was, was asked why he climbed Everest, he said, because it's there. Is it a similar thing for you in going to space? What, mo what motivates you to be there? You know, I like uh, like challenges, and I was a Navy uh, pilot and test pilot, and for me... Flying in space seemed like the logical, uh, you know, next step as far as, you know, things that would challenge me. Um, but, you know, what I've come to, to find uh, that makes this a very uh, satisfying experience and satisfying profession for me is doing something that's extremely, extremely difficult. Having, you know, people live in space here and do the type of work we do uh, for the last 15 years is, you know, could arguably be more difficult uh, than than when we went to the moon, building a space station, a space station, and operating it for so long. And you know, for me, having the privilege to work in this program and being a part of something so hard is, uh, you know, what has made this worth it for me. NASA has put a call out for those who might want to be astronauts. What would you look for if you were on the hiring committee? So I was on the uh, hiring committee last time, and uh, we picked a great group. And, you know, what we look for are people that are technically uh, competent. You need a, a, a background in, uh, you know, in the scientific uh, field, whether it's uh, as a scientist, an engineer, medical doctor, or, you know, a, a person that's in the military with some kind of technical background. And we want those people to have proven themselves in their current profession, being very high performers, but also people that get along 
uh, well as part of a team because this is a huge team effort, not just your crew members here on board, but also with all the folks you have to work with on the ground. And, uh, you know, just a really uh, a diverse uh, group of people with, uh, you know, skills that are very broad. Um, we have a lot of systems here on board the space station, and we can't call a repairman when uh, one of them breaks. So we have to be uh, kind of generalists in a lot of ways. You're, you've done hundreds of experiments, or you're doing hundreds of experiments. What's the coolest thing you've done so far? You know, I, it's kind of hard to say. Um, if we're talking about uh, this flight, I would, I would have to say, you know, the two spacewalks I, I got to do because I had never done those before. And, uh, you know, that's a very challenging experience. I think in general, uh, you know, the launch, the landing are, are pretty exciting. As far as specific kind of research experiments, um, the stuff we've done with rodents are is pretty interesting as well as the human research that we're doing with uh, Misha and I as part of this one-year uh, research experiment. Uh, you know, the reason why we're here in space for a year has been pretty interesting stuff. Have you noticed any of the effects on space that you're there to, uh, to, to look at and discover in yourself? You know, a lot of the data we collect is, is stuff that has to be analyzed on the ground. For instance, we can't see uh, you know, bone loss um, ourselves. You know, that's something that, uh, you know, we'll have to notice with, uh, with imaging technology when I get back. But, uh, you know, there are certain things we could see with regards to muscle mass, like the amount of muscle I've lost in my calf muscle uh, because we don't walk up here is pretty significant. Uh, you know, some effects on my vision initially, although those have kind of leveled off and have been pretty consistent with what I had on my last flight. But we're also looking at, you know, the effects of this environment, um, the microgravity environment and the radiation environment on, uh, on myself on a, uh, on a genetic level, how my DNA is affected. And that's using my brother as a control subject on the ground. So some of the things we can see, you know, I've seen some muscle loss. I've seen some muscle gain because of the amount of exercise we do. Um, but some of it's, it's stuff that we'll have to analyze once I get back on the ground. Is it still a thrill to look out the window? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, the Earth is a very beautiful place. It's, uh, you know, thrilling to look at. You know, but like a lot of things, you know, if you see it often, it's not as thrilling as the first time you've seen it, but it's still, uh, it still never fails to impress. Have you been following the news from uh, up there? I mean, have you watched, what do you think of the presidential campaign that's going on down here on Earth? Yeah, so we have, uh, have the news on um, pretty much all the time, unless we're watching something specific. And we have coverage about, you know, 50, you know, about 50 minutes every hour. So I do follow it very closely, and I have to say it's, uh, it's been very interesting. I also heard you watched uh, Game of Thrones while you were up there. How long do you think you'd uh, last up there if you worked with your colleagues the way they do on Game of Thrones? Um, you know, I, I, I'd like to think I would last uh, a long time, but you never know. But the good news is we don't, we don't work that way. We actually get along very well. You know, it's an international space station. We have crew members from uh, both the U.S. and Russia and now the uh, United Kingdom um, with uh, Tim Peake uh, from the U.K., Tim Coper and Yuri Mil Melenchenko arriving just yesterday. And, uh, you know, it's great to see that on this space station we can work, um, you know, across cultures in a very, very cooperative way. All right, Commander Scott Kelly, we thank you so much for being with us. My pleasure. Thank you. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the CBS Face the Nation portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from CNN International. Station, this is CNN. How do you hear me? 
We hear you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the space station. Well, it is a huge thrill for us to welcome you to our program and for me to be able to talk to you all the way out there in space. It's really exciting. But you're halfway through nearly a year-long mission. Is it ho-hum for you at this point, or is it still gee whiz? Scott Kelly. Yeah, Christiane, um, you know, there are certain parts about, of, about it that at certain times I do kind of, you know, take a step back and I realize, you know, I'm living in space and doing, uh, you know, this work that I consider a privilege. Um, but we've been up here now over 260 days. So, you know, sometimes it, um, you know, the daily routine is, is somewhat of a routine. But there are those moments that, uh, you know, impress me and I'm sure Misha in a very uh, profound way. Let me ask you, Mikhail Kornienko, how does it feel to be up there so long, nearly six months now? Михаил, можно задать вам вопрос тогда? Скажите, как вы себя ощущаете на борту? Вот какие ощущения? Ведь вы так долго уже пробовали в космосе, примерно на уже шесть месяцев. Я пробовал примерно девять месяцев. Actually, it's not six, it's nine months. So I, I'm feeling fine. Besides, my crew is just great, wonderful. All the crews that worked on board with me are great professionals. Of course, as any of us, I miss my family, my home. But I can say that I am happy, excited, and very proud to be entrusted with this mission. Let me ask you both, as I love watching you float that microphone back and forth to each other. You are watching our planet with a view unlike anyone else in this universe right now. And you've just seen a climate deal reached in Paris, about 200 nations signing on. Were you surprised that it would happen? I know you lobbied for it. And what is, you know, your take on the survival of our planet? Scott Kelly, first you. Well, you know, a couple of things. You know, I was surprised on the agreement because just to get that many people to agree to anything is uh, is pretty difficult. So, you know, in that regard, it was, uh, you know, a historic event. And, uh, you know, hopefully it'll continue to be supported. It, I, I think it has to go back to, you know, all the individual countries and, and still gain, you know, their support. Um, you know, with regards to the planet, um, you know, having this uh, vantage point from space, you do see things uh, like the thinness of the atmosphere that are alarming. I mean, it just looks very fragile. Uh, we can, you know, see the effects of, you know, our presence on Earth by looking out the window. There are certain areas of, of, of the globe that are almost constantly covered with, uh, with pollution. We can see weather weather systems that uh, you know don't normally occur in certain areas that we now see more commonly so you know I think it's uh, you know something that's very important for you know the collective group of people that require this planet for them to survive you know it's kind of funny people say you know we need to save the earth I think what we need to save is us because you know the earth is probably going to last a long time but you know we need the environment of the earth to uh, be able to sustain us, so we have to protect it. Mm -hmm. Good point. Let me ask you both. Uh, obviously, your two nations, Russia and the United States and many others, cooperated on this agreement, but they are at loggerheads on so many other big, big issues today, whether it's Ukraine, whether it's Syria, whatever it might be. I'm just curious, does politics play any role up there all those miles away in space? Разрешите мне задать вопрос для обоих. Дело в том, что вот мы наблюдали, как был подписан конференция по климату в Париже, соглашение это подписали по защите климата. Однако в то же время как Россия, так и Америка и другие страны работают вместе на борту. Скажите, а вот как вот политические вопросы, например, вот Украина, Сирия, влияют ли они на вот скажем, экипаж как-либо. Есть ли споры между вами? 
Well, Christiane, you know, so clearly it's something we're, we're obviously aware of. I mean, we follow the news. It's not something we generally uh, discuss between each other, although sometimes we do. Um, you know, what's most important to, you know, Misha and I and our, you know, Russian colleagues and them with us is that we have to rely on each other literally for our lives. And, uh, you know, not only are we great friends, but we are completely uh, reliant on each other. Um, you know, if there's an emergency up here, you know, that we have to take care of one another. And that's f for us the most, you know, important thing. And, you know, we understand that there can be conflict at times between nations. And, you know, I think one of the great things about this space station is we have demonstrated that, you know, two cultures that are, you know, somewhat different and then somewhat sometimes can be at odds with one another over certain things have demonstrated that they can work together in a very cooperative way. It's something very, very difficult for a long period of time. I can only join in and say that the International Station is free of any politics. We are very polite and always very considerate of um, each other in such discussions. Furthermore, I would say that our work here and our cooperation on board the ISS is a great example for uh, all politicians, because if they spent at least one month on board together, it would have probably resolved most of their uh, problems and discussions on the ground. Well, you've given me uh, and the whole world now a whole great program. Maybe we should send them all up to space and, and they can solve all the world's problems up there, like you're working so hard. What are some of the real kind of hardships, for instance, physically? I understand you have to really work out hard in order not to atrophy, for your muscles not to, to break down. Yeah, our bodies are pretty smart. You know, they recognize in this envi microgravity environment that you don't need your skeleton to, uh, you know, hold all your stuff together. So we lose bone mass uh, because we don't need it. And uh, likewise with your muscles. So we have to do exercise to prevent, uh, to prevent that from, from happening. But, you know, there are other hardships too up here that, that we, you know, we deal with them and we understand it. And, uh, but the fact that you can't go outside, I mean, you can occasionally do a spacewalk, but that's not like walking outside in the, in the fresh air or at least a different uh, the kind of air that you experience on a, on a daily basis. The space station is nice, but, um, you know, there, there's no running water. You can't take a shower. The uh, diet is, uh, gets pretty routine. So, um, you know, all that is, is something that we've learned to live with, but we still understand that it's a, it's a big privilege to, to represent our countries up here. Scott and Mikhail, I know we don't have a huge amount of time. I can see one of your colleagues behind you who's sort of dancing and floating around in zero gravity doing whatever he's doing there. Can you do something for us? Can you flip? Can you dance? What do you like to do for exercise up there? Both of you? <laughs> oh, my goodness. So that's that's not much exercise, but uh, it's fun. Well, Scott Kelly, Mikhail Kornienko, thank you so much for joining us from space today. It's a big one for me today. <laughs> Our pleasure, Christian. Thanks for uh, allowing us to be on your program. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you, CBS Face the Nation and CNN International Station. We're now resuming operational audio communications.